They are cosmopolitan, found all over the world, in forests, among streams and ponds, and also up in the air among the mosses. And they are found in lakes and seas, floating amidst plankton, or sometimes rooted in place, in colonies, as individuals, or loose planktonic associations. These are the rotifera, or rotifers, multicellular animals with about a thousand cells each, give or take, depending on species. Rotifers are most known for their coronas, circles of hundreds of cilia on their heads, which they use to create whirlpools to suck in food while they're feeding, and which create the illusion of spinning wheels. The one we are slowly zooming in on, currently upper right center of the screen, is actively feeding on organic matter in the water around it, but rotifera are known for eating almost anything, including each other. And as we slowly close in upon it, we can see how the rotifer is actually a multicellular animal through the observation of discrete but well-defined organs. If you watch carefully, you can see the distinct organs within the rotifer's body. It has a brain, a nervous system, membranes, and a digestive gland, and that white haze in the lower half, that's its gastrointestinal system. And what appears to be a tail is actually a foot and toe, which some species of rotifers will use to anchor themselves to objects from time to time. Rotifers are voracious creatures, and once they have drawn food within, it is passed down a chewing pharynx called a mastex into a jaw called the trophy, a complex chewing mechanism which in each species is specifically evolved for the food the species prefers. This rotifer was found living among a mass of river algae, though it doesn't seem to prefer to eat the algae itself. In fact, it seems to be chewing on something clear, as if not there, within its local environment. A part of that environment are many vulvocene algae, such as uterina, which can look like individual algal cells or small clusters usually found in even numbers. These vulvocene algae surround themselves with an extracellular matrix of glycoproteins. For simplicity's sake, we'll just call it an organic slime, and the rotifer appears to be happily moving among that slime and eating it. Switching to false color is almost like x-raying the rotifer, allowing us a clearer view of what's going on within. Every now and then, if you watch closely, you can see the rotifer take in some of that slime, it is chewed by its mastics and passed quickly onto its gastrointestinal system. And then the rotifer gives something back, right there. It devours small organisms or substances such as the glycoprotein and transforms them into manure, thereby recycling nutrients back into the environment. It is very hard to film some organisms in the microscopic world. They may be tiny, but on their scale, they jet around as fast as rabbits and birds. Now, rotifers are not all that fast, but they're not that slow either. So, to allow us a better view of this one, I have caged it. Wasn't that hard, really. Once I found it, I laid down a few strands of algae. This puts the rotifer in a non-distressing, natural environment, for indeed I found them among algae, and there is lots of food around it in which it can feed. And this gives us a chance to switch to false color, get in very close, and take a good look. You'll probably notice right away that this rotifer looks different from the previous. It has a forked tail, and this is because it is another species of rotifer, something that is entirely unsurprising. There are many species of rotifer, over 2200 known around the world. Rotifers are most certainly not the only species of microorganism that feeds by creating water currents around it to draw food into its maw. The beautiful symbiotic organism known as Paramecium bursaria, which we took a look at in the previous episode, is covered with thousands of cilia, and just like the rotifer, it uses them to feed too. And, just like the rotifer, it also uses those many cilia to move. Though I would argue the Paramecium bursaria is more effective at moving water currents. Here, you can see the tremendous disturbance it creates in the water all around it. And moving in, you can get a better view as to why. It is covered with thousands of hairs, making it effectively able to move the water all around it with every part of its body. But it is truly interesting that a single-celled organism like this paramecium should feed in a way similar to a complex multicellular organism like the rotifer. 
Also as noted previously, rotifers are multicellular animals, having about a thousand cells, give or take. Not only can they be found in fresh and salt water, but they can also be found on plants, like this moss. And they are not the only microscopic animals that share such a habitat. Rotifers are frequently found around another but unrelated multicellular animal, the tardigrade. However, tardigrades can possess as many as 40,000 cells, making them considerably more complex. And because tardigrades waddle about and are pudgy and a little photogenic, they receive considerably more attention. But rotifers are everywhere, and they are considerably easier to find than tardigrades. In this clip, I was centered on the Eudorina algae, dead center of the screen. Though, upon later examination, I noticed that there were two rotifera, or rotifers, on the top left. One is just about in the focal plane, and there is another just beneath it making the point themselves that you will find them everywhere. Sometimes sessile, rooted to a certain place. Sometimes planktonic, drifting about with colonies of other microbes, perpetually eating, breaking down nutrients, and recycling substances within the ecosystem. If we switch to false color, we can get a better view of these two rotifers. We'll keep the plane of focus to the upper one, but you can clearly see the other one moving a bit below it. These diminutive animals, so often unnoticed, contribute a great deal to the ecosystem, moving and recycling nutrients and becoming food themselves. And, as multicellular animals, with brains, organs, and nervous systems, they have an awful lot in common with us. Thank you for coming along on this voyage of discovery into the MicroStory. The MicroStory program is part of the Understory Network, a series of programs promoting education on the science of the natural world. Under our MicroStory playlist, you can find all the programs related to all things microscopic. In the Understory playlist, we study animals, plants, and fungi, and issues of conservation. And in the SkyStory playlist, we explore astronomy and the world of astrophotography. Our programs are made possible by our many viewers, patrons, and students. And we owe all of you a profound thanks. And if you like what you see here, please take a moment to like and subscribe.